What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about refactoring your code. And we're going to take this opportunity to refactor our sorting algorithm that we created in the previous video. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll leave a link to it in the card section up above and down in the description area. So definitely check that out. Refactoring your code is extremely important because it's going to help you to identify any bugs that might exist in your code. You might identify new ways to solve the same problem, more efficient ways to solve the problem. And overall, it's a good practice to refactor your code so that way the user experience and maintenance of your code over time improve. So in our previous tutorial, we had our sorting algorithm and we used our bubble sort in order to create this tutorial. And I showed you here that before sorting, these are the numbers that we used in the array. We ended up doing 56 comparisons and after sorting, everything was done. Everything was sorted properly. So we're going to go back to our text editor and this is the uh, function that we created over here. Again, just a recap, we have our array over here with the list of numbers that we're going to be sorting. This is unsorted right now, obviously. We have our function bubble sort with the argument of array there, which is this variable that we created. We're referencing it here. We have uh, inside the function, we have a length variable that's counting the elements in the array. We have a comparisons variable set to zero. We have two nested for loops. In the first one, we have i set to zero while i is less than length, we're going to increment i. And then in our inner loop, we have j set to zero. And if j is less than length, minus one, we're going to increment j. And then we're keeping track of our comparisons. Then we have our if conditional here. If j is greater than the number that comes after j, then we're going to do the swap itself. So that pretty much means that if 13, I'm going to give you an example here, 13 is greater than seven, then that means we have to do a swap. So we create our temporary variable that has the value of this number seven, let's say. We're assigning to that. So this is going to remember the number seven. Then in this one here, we're going to assign the value of 13 in this example to this position right here. And then this position, we're going to assign it the value of seven. So that's the swap. And then we're going to echo it out. We're going to return it. We're going to echo out before sorting. We're going to use the implode function. We're going to use our bubble sort function we created here. And then after sorting. So we're going to save this file, save as bubble sort two. All right. So we want to have a clean working version. So that way we have our older code and we have our new code as well. Make sure you have your web server started as well. So now what changes can we make over here? If you think about the application or if you think about the project itself, this little program we created, we're going to want to swap some things out. We're going to keep the array numbers the same because we want to have an exact comparison, an A-B test. We're going to keep the bubble sort function the same. Our length is going to be the same. We're going to be counting every element in the array. We'll still do the comparisons. In this for loop though, what we're going to do, this is the first one. We're going to create a new variable called swapped. And we're going to assign it the value of false. At this point, what we're going to be doing is assuming that it hasn't been swapped yet. And then we're going to create another variable, new boundary, assign it the value of zero. And we're going to be using this in a moment and I'll show you why. So basically in the first iteration, we're going to say that swapped is false. And now in the second or inner loop over here, we're going to change this value to another variable we're going to create up here at the top of the function. Right after length, we're going to create the variable boundary. And we're going to give it the value of length minus one. So we're pretty much just taking this value here and placing it into the boundary variable. So just replace that. So pretty much in the condition here, we're saying J is set to zero. If J is less than boundary, increment J. Then we do our comparisons. We're keeping track of that. Then in the if condition over here, if you recall what we're doing is we're saying that if J, which is the element that we're looking at at the current iteration, is greater than J plus one, meaning the one right after it. So if 13 is greater than seven, 
Then we have to do the swap. We know that. So we have our temporary variable. We're assigning the value of, in this case, seven to temporary variable. That way it remembers it. And then we're saying that J plus one, this position right here, is gonna be assigned the current value of what's in the J position right here, which is 13. And then we're gonna take the number seven and assign it to that position. So pretty much we're just swapping 13 and seven to change their places. Now, if we do this, then we're gonna assign the Boolean value of true to our variable of swapped. And then we'll use our new boundary variable. And we'll assign it the value of J. Now, over here, right above the end of first loop over here, because you see the first loop, right above this closing bracket right here, want to create the variable boundary and assign it the value of new boundary. And then we're going to have an if condition, if not swapped, then I want to break. Meaning we're going to be going through the loops again. And then pretty much everything else is going to stay the same. Let's look at our code. We have the same array. We're adding this variable over here, boundary, assigning the value of length minus one. And then over here, we created our swapped variable with a Boolean value of false, with a new boundary set to zero. And then here, the only thing we changed was adding this boundary variable to replace this value. And then over here, we kept pretty much everything the same, but we created the swapped variable here, setting it to true. And new boundary is assigned the value of J. And then outside of that closing inner loop bracket there, we created our boundary variable and assigned the value of new boundary. And then we have our if conditional, if not swapped, then we're gonna break going through the code. All right, so make sure you save it. Let's go back to the browser. I'm gonna copy this here, turn that into a two and press enter. All right, so now let's take a look at the results. So in the first one, we have the same numbers that needed to be sorted as we do in the second one. Both versions of our algorithm accomplished the task of sorting them. The difference is that this one took 56 comparisons versus this one taking 22 comparisons. Now that's a significant difference. That's a performance improvement. That's an optimization of your code. Refactoring is a great way to deal with code improvements and to learn how you can make things better within your code. And what does this mean? If you have a project or a program that you're working on, this one right here is only less than 38 lines of code, but if your project or if your program is thousands of lines of code amongst thousands of files and folders, improvements that you make will improve the performance for the end user, and that's a user enhancement benefit, and it'll also reduce the amount of strain on your computer or your server. So that's why refactoring your code is always a good idea. Now let's just take a look at the comparison of the first code. Let's split that right. So here we have the first demonstration of our code, 29 lines of code. And this is our second demonstration over here, less than 38 lines of code. And overall, this code has made our little program more than 50% better, more than 50% faster in terms of the amount of computations that it has to follow. So refactoring is very important to do. It's generally a good idea to refactor your code when you get the chance because you want to improve your efficiency, your coding knowledge, your optimization of your code, things of that nature. All right, so if you want to get a copy of this code, you can just go to my website, picksomeweb.com, and I'll share this code on my site itself. I'll leave a link in the description area down below, so definitely check that out. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, smash that notification icon. If you have any thoughts, ideas, or opinions, leave them down below in the comment section, and I will see you in the next video. Happy coding.